Hey, welcome back. First of all, I just want to tell you I'm really proud of you for um, going through this year in the Bible stuff, even if you don't do every day, the fact that you're giving it a go. Uh, the Word of God is alive and sharp and active. It speaks into our lives and it will speak into yours. So I really hope this journey has been uh, a good one. Tell your friends, do it again. Um, it's it's life-changing. So congratulations. Uh, we're in 1 Samuel chapter 10 to chapter 12, um, and we're uh, learning more and more about the Israelites' journey as a nation. So Samuel is kind of nearing the end of his life. He's picked Saul to be the king, um, and the Lord has given him that wisdom. Saul, uh, he gives the same excuse as everybody else. He's from the smallest tribe, and he's the smallest, you know, which isn't true. The scripture says that he stands head and shoulders above every other man, and that he was the most handsome man in all of Israel. He seems like a very charismatic, strong, confident leader. But when we find him at the beginning of the journey here, uh, he's a bit scared, and rightly so, I suppose. A uh, king for Israel is a brand new thing. It's never been done before. A lot of the people are not for him. When Samuel announces that that's who it's going to be, they're like, what? He's not the guy. And so he's been shy from the beginning. You see at the very beginning, even when Samuel gave him the word, he never told anybody. He kept it to himself. We don't really know what the deal is with that, except probably he was a bit sheepish and thought maybe the whole thing wasn't going to happen. Uh, and he didn't think he was the man. What happens is uh, Samuel goes ahead because he's he he know he's a man who understands the word of the Lord, so he's just he's just like declared that Saul is going to be the king no matter what. But then what happens is there's a situation that requires some leadership, and what happens is the spirit of the Lord comes upon Saul for the occasion, and this is what happens over and over again when God anoints His leaders in the Scriptures, even though His best case scenario for the people of God is that every person of God would be a leader. And he would be their king. Uh, even in this lesser case, the plan B, as it were, the one that he didn't want to do, but he gave them a leader. And so he fills the leader with his spirit and gives him wisdom. And so Saul kind of uh, comes to the, he comes, there's this great injustice, there's this horrible kind of oppressor guy who's literally gouging out the right eye of all of these people and is trying to make Israel a deal that he'll take all their eyes. I mean, it's kind of like one of these, like, uh, I don't know, weird Star Wars kind of galaxy of the whatever plots, you know, it's just weird. And basically, the people of Israel are like, well, it's only an eye, you know, we got two. <laughs> and uh, and the Spirit of the Lord comes over Saul, and he's like, uh, uh, not going to happen, not on my watch. And he declares that uh, he's going to fight, and he has a strategy, and he tells all of Israel to join him and Samuel, and they go out together. And he has a, pl a plan of attack, and anyway, he delivers. Uh, Israel from this threat and he destroys these kings and all of a sudden because of this demonstration of his leadership and wisdom and ability uh, and the spirit of God with him then Israel throws him a party as an official king and sets up a, a nation as a kingdom and all kinds of things sets up the rules and stuff and it's just a fascinating um, reflection for me today is that God gives his leaders what they require to do the job they need to do and that it can feel daunting and it can feel squirmish and you can feel sort of like, I'm not even going to tell anybody because this is crazy. But when the time comes, when it's time for you to step up, when it's time for you to need to actually respond, to do, to lead, to take the charge, to say no to the enemy, to say to the people of God, we can be free. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you to do that. You can trust him in this. So get ready, be prepared, keep listening, keep working on prophecy, keep hearing from the Lord, and get prepared uh, for the anointing that God wants to give you to do what it is he's called you to do. <laughs> How exciting.